Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to install Sway on Arch Linux and cover very basic configuration. For those not familiar with Sway, it's a tiling Wayland compositor. It's a fully standalone graphical interface that offers a ton of customization and flexibility. I'm not going to get into the semantics of window managers versus compositors and how that all fits into desktop environments or changing a desktop environments compositor. I refer you to the Arch Wiki entry because that's a good starting point to understand the differences and, and start getting into some of those more advanced aspects of configuring a desktop environment. And so Sway dictates how to present windows using a tiling type system. Using the default layout, the first window launches and takes up all available space outside of the Sway bar, which is basically like your taskbar. If another window is launched in the same workspace with no modifiers, the space is split between those two windows. If you're coming from a traditional desktop environment using standard settings, Sway's mouse functionality is probably a bit different than you're used to. We'll look at some examples of this later. This video is just scratching the surface. Sway offers a lot of customization and functionality. Out of the box, it's totally possible to learn the very basics using defaults and develop an efficient workflow with Sway. I may cover additional Sway related topics in more detail in the future. Last couple of things to mention before I start. I'll be doing some of the demo over SSH. Some of it will be over VNC and some will be over Proxmox VM console. It'll just be easier to work over the VNC console because VNC doesn't require the use of the console menu tools like the Proxmox VM console does. I'll be working on the console to demonstrate starting Sway manually and automatically and also demonstrate using D SDDM. Working over the console is more in line with configuring Sway from a desktop or laptop perspective, since it is the virtual equivalent to physically working on the machine. With all that upfront stuff out of the way, let's get into installing some packages. So first we'll go ahead and install those packages. Yeah, I'm just going to choose the default fonts here. So a quick rundown of the packages we installed with Sway. You saw foot there, that's short for foo terminal, and that will work under Wayland. It is written to run under Wayland. I'm not gonna get into much detail about server protocols in this video, but if you want to install your favorite graphical applications that are designed to run under X, you can install xorg-wayland to run them on top of Wayland. It's not perfect and not all applications will work without some tweaking. Also install WMenu, which is a text launcher that can be accessed with a keyboard shortcut. There are multiple launchers available and some of them have more features than others. I'm just gonna use that one here for demonstration. I installed Firefox just to mix it up so that when I'm demonstrating how the tiling works in Sway, we're not just looking at a bunch of terminal windows. And finally, SDDM as a display manager, and we will get into that in a little bit. And so for the initial setup, both Sway and Foot have default configuration files that aren't copied to the user config directory by default. I'm going to copy those over. This location will override the files in the Etsy directory. You can check out the man pages for a full list of the locations in the search order of those config files. So my config directory in my home was not created yet. So I went ahead and created that along with a directory for both Sway and Foot. And then I copied over the Sway config and copied over the Foot config. And so one of the first changes I'm gonna make real quick is to Foot's config because the font is so small. I'm, I am trying to show this for a video, but it's small anyways uh, by the Fault size, so you may want to change that if you do decide to use foot. Now that we have those items in place, we can type sway at the command line to manually start it. So that's all we have to do there to start it. To automatically start Sway at logon, we can add checks to our bash profile. Check out the Arch Wiki for more info and options. 
So back over here on my SSH section, I'm going to go ahead and edit my profile. And so the quick explanation here is if display is not set and xtg underscore vtnr equals one, then start sway. Basically, that is equivalent to the TTY number. So if we're on TTY1, go ahead and start sway. Go ahead and save that. And so back over here on sway, I'm going to go ahead and exit out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and log out here. Log back in. And now Sway automatically starts at log on. And so just to point something out real quick here. Over on TTY2. That value isn't set to one, and so Sway does not start automatically. And so one last thing before I move away from the VM console is our display manager. SDDM doesn't start after install, so I'll have to manually start it. Also, after install, it won't automatically start and boot unless it's set to enabled. So if you want to always launch into SDDM, you're going to have to do that. So first, I'll have to stop Sway from starting when I log on by commenting out those lines in my profile. So if we check the status of SDDM, it's currently not running and it is set to disable. So we'll go ahead and start it up. And no configuration required with SDDM. Sway populates in the drop down here. And entering credentials will start a Sway session. The Sway Manager is optional, so you can skip installing it if you don't want to use it. On my laptop, install of Arch, I start Sway when I log on by placing a script in my profile. You can choose whichever you prefer. Quick note that other Display Managers will work with Sway, but Display Managers are not officially supported. So real quick here, password, and we're all set. Okay, now I'm set up with my VNC session, make it a little easier to demonstrate some functionality with some hotkeys. And one of the first things we can do is by default, Sway has a combo to open a terminal, and that is the logo key or the super key and enter. And then let's check out our configuration. So there's pretty good reference within the configuration file, and there are some good examples in here. And here we have our mod key setting, and by default, that is going to be the Windows key or the logo key. And personally, I like these defaults. This is something you get into later. If you have a better workflow, I think that things happen to be set up pretty good. But again, it's your setup, so you set it up how you'd like. And so I'm not going to go through everything in here, but I do want to run through some of the basics. And one of the things we can start with here is the terminal, which we've already discussed the hotkey combination. And you can install something else if that's what you'd like. I didn't add this ahead of time. It's set up as part of the default config. And also our launcher can be set here. So the key binds call your preferred option. I'll come back to W menu. And so really to, just to learn the basics of Sway, this file is a great place to just glance through to get the hang of it. There is a good reference online, but you have this right here if you want it. But there may be some things in here that don't sound familiar. The term or topic might require some understanding of how compositors or window managers work. So I will include a link to the i3 documentation. That's a good place to start. It really explains a lot of what's going on, which is the X11 predecessor of Sway. But the Sway documentation refers you back to the i3 documentation. And so I'll run through some stuff with W menu. 
It can be used to start an application on the currently focused workspace. I installed it earlier and by default, we can launch that with super key and D and that will open up the prompt where we can enter some text here to try to launch something. So I'm gonna go ahead and start Firefox. So you notice as I move back and forth here, it turns blue at the title bar showing where our focus currently is. We can use super key and F to toggle the currently focused window to full screen and then toggle back. And we can also use the arrow keys to focus. We can use super key and the left and right arrow to move our focus between windows. And we can also move the window position. So if we use shift, super key and left or right, we can shift these left and right, and we can use up and down to flip the orientations so that we can switch between vertical and horizontal split. And so Sway also has the concept of workspaces, so we're not confined to flipping around and switching between windows on a single space. So the current focus is on workspace one, as you can see up here. So to move the focused window to another workspace, we can press shift in the super key and the number of the workspace we want to move to. So that, and now we move to workspace two with super key and the number two. And there we go, we flipped over that workspace where we moved our window to. And so we can jump back to workspace one. And by default, windows are fixed. They can't be dragged around. So I can't do anything with this as is, but we can switch windows to floating mode. And so we can do that with the super key shift and space. And now we have the window in floating mode and we can drag it around. And then we can press shift super and space to flip it back to tiled mode. And Sway also has a concept called scratch pad and that gives us a container to work with where we can drop windows. So let me just open another instance here of an application. And then if we press shift, super key and minus, we put the currently focused window into the scratch pad. We'll go ahead and stick this Firefox instance into there as well. If super key and minus. And why don't we just open up one more instance of Boot Terminal here, and we'll just stick that in there as well. And so we can cycle through the items in our scratch pad with the super key and minus. So that brings the first item, then we can hide it again with super minus, then super minus, and the next, hide, and then we pull up the third item. We can pull an item out of there by using the same method we use to switch from floating to tiled with shift, super key, and space. And we can also send something from the scratch pad to another workspace by pressing super key, shift, and the workspace number we want to send it to. Send it to 10 by pressing zero. And of course, we can also work with different layouts. So if I open something again here, let's just open instance of Firefox. And so we actually start out in split layout and we can switch to stacking with super plus S. And now we move to stack mode. So and cycle through our items with them stacked up on top here. And we also have tabbed mode if you prefer that, and that is super key plus W. And now we can move back and forth between our tabs up at the top, or we can switch back to the split layout with super key and E. We also have the ability to resize windows and I'm gonna pull up our scratch pad here. And then I'm going to enter resize mode with super key and R. And here we get a notification that we are in resize mode. And so if I press the up arrow key, the down arrow key, left and right, I can resize and I hit escape and I exit resize mode. 
And so that's just some of the basics of Sway. There's other practical configuration that you could apply, such as how you'd handle a multi-display setup. You could have startup applications and lots of customization with the appearance of Sway. I got my laptop installed. I set up a script that gets called by Sway to display a battery status indicator that changes color depending on the charge. There's some example Sway configurations out there that have all kinds of cool customizations, or you can learn Sway's components and come up with your own from scratch. This video is just to get you started with installing and working, working with the basics. There are various man pages related to Sway topics and commands, as well as a community maintained wiki page on GitHub. Most of the documentation from i3 window manager applies to Sway since Sway is the Wayland equivalent. Stated on swaywm.org, Sway is a tiling Wayland compositor and drop-in replacement for the i3 window manager for X11. I'll include links to those wiki pages in the description. So that's it for this video. If you have issues or you want more Sway related videos, let me know in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, please like the video. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.